Good afternoon. We hope everyone's still awake and wide-eyed and bushy-tailed. Uh, you have your Kempton Advantage Health Plans Trust team here. So this is Kanda, and I'm your account manager, Kanda Ramos. And I'm going to make a few introductions. Um, we have Troy Stillwagon, who is our chief information officer. I would tell him to wait, but you're not going to see him. Uh, we have Mindy McClure, who is our IT business partner and kind of one of the big um, components on helping develop this program for you guys. Then we have Stephanie Young, who is your lead uh, billing and administrative clerk, which kind of handles all of your eligibility and billing uh, questions, concerns, and processes. So today what we're going to do is we're going to give you a really quick overview of the new online enrollment and eligibility program. It's, it's a really neat program and it's going to make life easier for all of you. Um, as well as it'll be able to uh, help us work with you and, and, and get information to and from in a more uh, modern way to where it can be tracked and held and, and, and things of that nature. So you'll learn a lot about it today. We do ask that if you have any questions um, on the webinar there on the screen, there's a section for questions. Just feel free to type it out and we will answer those live. Um, as well, there are about three handouts for you that you can click on and download to look at. You can print them off and keep them, whatever you'd like to do, but I believe that they're a PDF form, so you can either save it on your computer or print them off. But uh, without further ado, we're going to have Troy and Mindy get this show started. We thank you so much, and if for some reason you were to have any trouble submitting a question on the webinar uh, page, feel free to email myself, Kanda Ramos, or you can also email Stephanie Young. Uh, we're probably the two that work with you the most, and then we'll get with Troy and Mindy to get you some answers. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Thank you very much, Kanda. Really appreciate the introductions. This is Troy Stillwagon. As uh, Kanda introduced me, I'm the Chief Information Officer. Started here at Kempton on May 13th, about three and a half months, months ago. And I think I was low man on the totem pole, so I was elected to do the webinars and to uh, uh, show you these new exciting uh, capabilities that we have through our uh, enrollment system and our uh, um, employer group portal. So I hope you're having a good day. I realize that I'm standing between you and probably uh, your margarita or supper or something of that sort. Probably so the margarita. The margarita. So, uh, uh, but we're very excited to bring you this uh, new capability. Um, and uh, this will be, as you'll see, this will be found uh, um, in the employer group portal, which hopefully you're used to uh, going to the employer group portal already. Uh, so real quickly, it shouldn't take too long to get through this. Uh, the first thing we're going to be looking at is uh, a couple slides uh, on a PowerPoint presentation. Um, but I first wanted to basically say, uh, the reason why this is important to the Kempton Group and uh, to our clients um, and uh, just tell you a little bit, bit about kind of how we do things today versus uh, why we're rolling this tool out and these new functions uh, uh, that hopefully will help all of us. Uh, our current process of accepting enrollment information is uh, through many different methods. Uh, basically, we accept pretty much anything that comes our way, paper, email, spreadsheet, uh, any type of flat file that you might send to us, Excel spreadsheet, text, uh, I think uh, pretty much any form that you can get it to us. I don't think we've had carrier uh, pigeon yet. Uh, <laughs> not but, yet. Not yet, but uh, we would accept it right now if you send it through carrier pigeon. But uh, uh, bottom line is, is uh, right now, we kind of uh, accept many different uh, uh, methods uh, for you to submit um, changes uh, or uh, enrollment or terminations. Um, the current process creates additional time uh, and cost uh, because of the different submission methods, uh, and it doesn't allow us really to automate that process. Um, with the new online method, we're creating a standard submission process for all employers. Um, this allows for one method of submission uh, from all the different companies uh, to Kempton, and it allows us to automate this process uh, in the uh, background after you've submitted it through this tool in a standardized format. 
Uh, so uh, it also allows you as a group to be able to get online and view uh, the, uh, to be able to track your request on enrollments, changes, or terms. So you'll be able to see uh, where they're at in the process once you've submitted it through the tool. Uh, we believe the tool is uh, pretty easy to use. Uh, we're gonna do an online demo uh, this afternoon, uh, but uh, let's quickly talk about the types of things you can do through the tool. And maybe if you'll just uh, advance forward, uh, let's go to uh, basically the current functionality that you have in the uh, employer group portal is the ability at this time to view billing reports, plan doc type information, uh, and also to view your current eligibility. With this new functionality uh, through the tool that we'll be showing you, uh, you'll be able to enroll uh, and uh, basically do enrollment and eligibility management functions. Uh, and you'll be able to do this on new hires, uh, any type of plan changes you have, terminations, uh, adding maybe a new dependent, there's a baby that was born or something like that. Any qualifying events that would allow you to make a change during the year uh, or whether it was open enrollment, you'll be able to do that through the tool. So you'll be able to do all these things listed here, enroll or decline coverage on behalf of a new hire, uh, enroll, decline or modify coverage during open enrollment, or any type of special enrollment event, uh, enroll or decline or modify dependent coverage, add or modify beneficiaries, if that's applicable to your group, and add or modify personal contact information. Um, as I stated before, uh, you're really gonna be utilizing the same system that you're used to using today. Uh, you are used to going to advantagehealthplans.com, uh, uh, choosing the employer, uh, um, uh, button, uh, and then that brings you up with a login. Uh, you log into the employer portal, uh, and then what's going to be new is there's going to be a link for you to click on eligibility management, uh, which will get you into this new section of the portal. So Mindy's going to go through and basically show you, right now we'll begin the demo, which will kind of show you uh, how you would log in. Uh, so you would click on the, once you went to the advantagehealthplans.com, you would click on employer button. It brings up your login. This is the same login that you've always used. Uh, we will not be adding a new login for you. Once you've logged in, you see that that gets you into our portal, employer group portal. And on the right-hand side, uh, there is a list of quick links. On the top of that list of quick links is eligibility management. You select eligibility management and it gets you into our uh, tool that we have. I'm just going to quickly on the front page here of the new tool, just give you a quick rundown of what some of the uh, functions that are available through this tool. Um, you'll notice that uh, on the black bar, uh, you basically have the employer tools that are available. Um, and then at the bottom right, uh, there is the kind of quick links that are found uh, within uh, the system so that as you become more familiar with what you want to do with the system, you can just quickly select a, a link on here and we'll take you immediately to uh, what you want to do if you just wanted to make a change in division or make a edit to a participant, uh, you'd be able to just click on the participant on the left-hand side in the box and then basically make a selection on the quick link. We'll show you how to, we're gonna use that a little bit later um, when we uh, uh, show you how to term an employee. Uh, but the first thing that, uh, but before we get to there, let me go through some of the tools that are available on the black bar and uh, some of the capabilities that are uh, on each one of those tabs. Uh, the employer tab that she's pointing, that Mindy's pointing to now uh, gives you the ability to just view all of the participants. Those participants are made up of your employees and the dependents that you've set up in the system. Um, and just as a note, uh, just uh, that I, I think I forgot to say one thing about this is we are utilizing a test system. Uh, so we have no live data. Uh, and we basically, when we do uh, get into the system and add a new employee and select a medical plan for that employee, 
uh, you're basically going to see all the plans that are available to Advantage Health Plan because of the way we've set this test system up. But when you're doing this yourself, you only see the plans available that you have through your uh, group. Uh, under uh, eligibility, uh, that's where you're able to either do an eligibility change, a new enrollment, or uh, during the open enrollment system, do an annual enrollment. Um, under the benefits section, this is the list of plans that are available uh, to uh, your group. As you'll see, it pretty much lists everything that's available uh, under AHP. Under forms, that's where your plan docs will be available. Uh, they're also still available under the document library uh, that's within the employer group portal, uh, but you can also find them under the form section of this new uh, enrollment system. Human resource tab will not be utilized at this time. Uh, and then uh, we do have a help section, uh, which is a knowledge base, which gives you this, a searchable library of user guides. Uh, and uh, we found this to be very helpful uh, in being able to search, find what you want to do, and it does a very good job of walking you through uh, screen by screen and step by step if you want to add a participant or even how to find a participant or make a change to a participant. Anything you're looking for, you can pretty much find in that uh, search. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, at this time, we're going to go ahead and go into a, kind of a demo mode. And uh, we're going to, uh, and before we do that real quick, let me take a, let me at least stop and see if there are any questions that anybody has. If so, if you would, uh, wouldn't mind uh, submitting those uh, through the uh, question section of the webinar, uh, we will take that. We'll be happy to answer any questions that come up at this time. Does this go live? Uh, this goes, uh, we're going to roll this out. It's actually live with a few customers right now. The quest, first question that came up was, when does this go live? And uh, basically what we're going to do is, our plan is, is we have about six of these webinars. After we get finished with these webinars, uh, we will then roll this out to everyone that participated in the webinars uh, uh, on or before uh, October 1st. Uh, the system is already live with a couple of HP clients that we already have uh, and uh, uh, that we kind of used as guinea pigs with this. And, uh, and so far, everything's been going very well with them. Next question is, what, what's the preferred software to use? I'm guessing you mean a browser? Um, yeah, the preferred, if you, uh, the next question is, is what is the preferred software to use? And uh, uh, basically, we would say uh, Internet Explorer uh, is the preferred uh, browser that you need to use when you're using this system. I'm not 100% sure uh, which version of Internet Explorer is allowed, but we will find that out and we'll get that uh, answer to this group and to everybody uh, at a later time. But I think it goes pretty far back as far as the browsers that are, uh, the browser, uh, the IE browsers that are allowed as far as uh, going back a few versions. Great question. We're using Google Chrome, but Internet Explorer is the preferred. You could use either. Okay. Yeah, you can use either. You can use Google Chrome uh, or other browsers. And we found it to work in there, but the preferred browser is uh, um, Internet Explorer. Apparently, Mindy's preferred browser is Chrome. <laughs> <laughs> good catch, uh, very good catch. Good questions, any more questions? Okay, great, thank you for your participation. Appreciate that. So uh, as we go through the, uh, um, we're going to add a participant. We're going to add, um, uh, uh, terminate a participant, uh, and we're going to uh, add a dependent when we add the new employee to the system. So we're going to go down and uh, click on eligibility, as Mindy's done. Go down to new enrollments. Click on new enrollment. 
you can see that with this test system, we already have uh, uh, employees and or participants that are loaded into the system. You can also see that this is the screen where you'll see that, say, Jimmy Jones up there has been approved. Uh, that happens after you submit uh, all your changes. Once you've submitted, it shows an approved status. Uh, and we also have other statuses. This is where you can follow uh, once you've submitted something, uh, you can follow whether or not it's uh, uh, ultimately what will happen is, is it will disappear from this into the employer participant uh, tab that shows all the participants uh, under this group. So we'll go back and we're going to add a new enrollment. Uh, we're going to go down to the bottom of the screen uh, and we're going to select the division but you might have multiple divisions. We just have one division set up for this test, but you would select the division that that employee is part of. You would say add participant, click on that button. It's going to bring you to the uh, participant screen where it's basically asking for what type of class uh, um, they are uh, in, what's their start date, It asks for their annual salary, which is required uh, for uh, things like long-term disability or uh, some of the like products that we have. And it's personal information for this employee, uh, what their marital status is and date of birth. Uh, one point that I'll make is if it has an asterisk beside it, it is a required field. And then it's contact information is next. And then uh, we do have a mobile phone required. Uh, we realize that not everyone has a mobile phone, but you can put uh, any phone that you uh, um, want to in there, if they do not have a mobile phone, you can still use their home phone or their work phone and go ahead and put it into the mobile phone uh, section. You can put it in the other sections as well if you want to. Uh, and then just as a uh, um, note of reference, the effective date is automatically generated uh, based on the waiting period that we have for each group. So we've set this waiting period up for two months. Uh, the uh, start date was 7-1 that Mindy entered, and the effective date was automatically calculated to 9-1. But for each group, we would set up whatever your waiting period is, uh, and then it would automatically uh, calculate as to when the effective date um, uh, was based on that waiting period. So you save this record, participant information, It gives you a review screen to be able to review all the information that you entered. As you can see, it gives you the ability to edit the record if something was entered uh, incorrectly. Uh, and then it also allows you to complete enrollment at this time. So we're going to go ahead and click on complete enrollment. It will give you another screen just to be able to review all the information that you put in there just in case you edited it. Um, in this case, we didn't edit anything. We're going to save and continue. Everything looks good. It's going to come up with the uh, dependent screen next. This is where you will add your dependents. We're going to go ahead and add a dependent. Everything in this dependent screen, although there are not asterisks, all these fields are required. All right, we're going to save the dependent information. And you could add other dependents if you wanted to. In this case, uh, we've added a spouse. Uh, this person's married and we've just added their spouse. We're going to save and continue. So before the next screen that's going to come up is the core benefits where you select their medical. Uh, um, but before we do that, I just wanted to make sure there weren't any questions to this point. 
So if you do have any questions that you've been saving up and want to ask it right now, we'll take just a quick moment for any questions just about uh, adding a dependent or the information that you're adding. That's a good question. Uh, okay, the question is, is a salary required if we don't use your life or LTD application? Uh, I believe the answer is yes, but I will take that back and we'll uh, um, uh, answer that question for the group uh, after this meeting. I need to just go verify that because uh, we need to probably check on that and see what happens if you don't have life or LTD available. There were a few other questions, so I popped this out. Okay. Um, so the current Okay, and uh, I think uh, another question that we have that was asked is it basically states the current portal, and I guess you're talking about our GBAS portal? Or oh, the employer portal. The employer portal, okay. The current portal has monthly billing reports through May 2019. Will the prior monthly billing reports carry over to the new system? Uh, if this system isn't available to all users until October, how can I access the June through September reports right now? Um, okay, Ursula, we uh, appreciate that question. Uh, that is a, the, we're not taking away the uh, capabilities of the current portal, even as we implement this new portal. Uh, but uh, um, did you have an answer to this? Or? Ursula, the old, the, the billings that you were getting were off of our old GBAS web portal. The new ones from May forward are on our new portal, and you should have access to that now. And so if you need help getting your password and username, just email me after the meeting, and I can send it to you again. But they're available now to you on the new on the new portal. So, Ursula, that was uh, Stephanie, and uh, she'll, uh, she can reach out to you after this meeting just to make sure that uh, – you are able to get to that information. All right, great questions. Really appreciate it. Okay, so we're going to move forward and uh, go through and, and go ahead and select the medical plan. Uh, as you can see, we have multiple medical uh, plan options on this screen. As you go down, you'll also see that you have the capability if somebody doesn't select a medical plan or they don't want to participate in coverage, uh, you can uh, enter the information in here and select that they decline medical coverage. And there's four reasons that we have up there for declining medical coverage. You select that. And uh, then that way you can just, that can be in our system and we have that for our records and you can have that for your records as well. Um, we selected, did you select the medical coverage? Yeah. Okay, we're going to select the top medical option one uh, and select enrollment volume of EE plus spouse. The monthly premium and contribution are shown for both the participant and the employer group combined. Once we've selected the medical option, under this plan, the way we've set it up, basic life and long-term disability are a requirement. Under the medical option, we realize that that's not the case for uh, um, some of you, if not most of you. So those uh, basic life and, and LTD would be separated uh, um, uh, under if you don't have those as part of your medical coverage or if you don't have those as a requirement. So we, once we've selected this, because under this, uh, under the way we have it set it up now, is uh, it does have LTD. Uh, we are selecting, uh, uh, and basic life, we're going to select beneficiaries. We're going to select the spouse and set it to 100%. You could put uh, uh, others in there if you wanted to split it up amongst the spouse and anybody else that was a beneficiary. Uh, we have secondary beneficiaries in case something happened to the spouse. We're going to set it up for the estate of the insured. Save and continue that. Uh, 
Next, it's going to come up with the voluntary benefits. Uh, in this case, for the test system, we have a dental plan and a vision plan set up. We're going to select those for this individual and their spouse. We're also going to select just a voluntary uh, accidental death uh, policy for them of $10,000. Um, and uh, uh, basically, we're going to select life the beneficiaries for that AD and D. A secondary beneficiary like we did, a state of the insured. And then we're going to save and continue the selection of the voluntary benefits. So we've gone through the core benefits for this individual and we've gone through the uh, voluntary benefits. And uh, next, we just have a area for other insurance in case they had other insurance or Medicaid or Medicare available. We're going to select no for both these uh, individuals. There's no other insurance besides what they're uh, what they've selected. We're going to save and continue that. All right, and then it gives you the ability to review everything that you've done so far. Uh, setting up the personal information. It goes through and shows all their uh, medical and voluntary benefits, who the beneficiaries are, the other insurance. And then at the end, it gives you the ability to upload any supporting documents that you have, such as marriage certificate, in this case, since they're married, or a birth certificate if you had a new uh, uh, dependent that was uh, born and you needed the birth certificate. You can really upload any type of documentation that you want to here. And then you submit it as final. Once it's submitted as final, it will give you the ability to just uh, uh, either print this document for your own information if you want to save that, uh, um, have a hard copy of it, or you can just close out of this uh, window. Once it's submitted, uh, it means that you've approved it as the HR representative of your company, but it comes over to Stephanie and the admin team that now on our end will review that, uh, make sure that all the information is correct, and then they will submit it uh, for a weekly processing that we have with regards to it would go into, once they've submitted it, it would go into a standard file format that would then, I think we run that uh, every uh, Monday for that to be uploaded in the system. All right, let's go over to the questions just to make sure there's no questions just from the selection of benefits. Any more questions? Okay, doesn't look like we have any other questions. So we'll just uh, continue with a, uh, we're okay. gonna uh, terminate. Uh, Unless I'm Judy put something. Yeah, hang on. I'm sorry, we do have some questions coming in, looks like. No. Is marriage and or birth certificate required? It is Mar not. Marriage certificates are required to add a spouse. Okay, thank you. If you didn't hear that from Stephanie, uh, marriage certificates are required to add a spouse. What about uh, birth certificates? We don't require it. We do highly encourage the employers to require it, but okay. we, we don't require copies of it. So we don't require birth certificates, but we do highly encourage the employer group uh, to get a birth certificate or to require a birth certificate before adding a dependent child. Okay. And then one more question, can employees enroll online? Okay, so the next question is, can employees enroll online? Uh, this system will allow us uh, to have employees enroll online, but we're rolling out a first phase of this during open enrollment uh, uh, to the HR uh, um, representatives first, uh, because we'd like to make sure that uh, everything goes smoothly, that HR understands how to use the system, and then uh, at the beginning of next year, uh, we'll be working on uh, setting this up for employees 
uh, to be able to utilize the system for those groups that want to allow employees to go online and, and uh, select their own coverage. So that is the plan, but we want to get through this kind of first open enrollment uh, season uh, with the HR representatives just to make sure everything goes smoothly. Great question. All right, so we're going to go through next um, and we are going to terminate an employee. So you go select eligibility change, you set, select the employee that you'd like to terminate. We've selected Peter Summer. You go down and uh, to the, this is where you go down to the uh, quick link and you are gonna select ter terminate a participant. Go. And in this case, it just brings up one screen that uh, basically says, select the reason for the event. We're gonna select an exciting reason, retirement. We're going to set the event date. And if you do have an employee that's, uh, um, if you have a rule in place that basically says no matter what uh, time or date that employee uh, terminates service, if the effective date of their termination was 715, but you have coverage set up through the end of the uh, month uh, with that employee, uh, if that's your rule, then we'll have it set up in the system where even if you put 715 as the effective date, it would automatically submit it as 731 uh, 2019. The system will tell you that. Yeah, and the system will actually tell you through a message once you've entered that, that, hey, the effective date should really be through the, uh, that the member's coverage will go through the end of the month automatically. So we're going to submit and And you'll see that it actually set it up effective to 731 on the right hand side of the uh, screen. Then once you, it gives you an opportunity to review that, cancel, go back, redo it. Uh, if you do decide to submit it as final, it again goes to our admin and billing team who reviews this. And uh, if everything is correct, it, it uh, um, they submit it uh, for it to be uh, go through the standardized process and file processing to terminate that employee, uh, to put that in our system to terminate that employee's coverage at the end of the month. All right. So we have one more area to go through. There are a lot of things that you can do with this system. We just don't want to uh, overwhelm everybody with all the different nuances and little things that you can do as far as but those were a couple of things we know that you do most regularly, which is add new employees or make a change to an employee or terminate an employee. Uh, there are other changes you can make through there, but um, uh, that's something that once you get onto the system, it is pretty easy to uh, uh, work through it, especially through the uh, kind of quick links that are down at the bottom right uh, to be able to jump to a section. The last thing that we're going to show you is just how to do annual enrollment. Uh, the annual enrollment for everyone will come up with this AHP 100 Advantage Health Plans Trust. Based on your login and password, it will only show you your participants. Uh, and as you see, these are all in an initialized state. And what it does is all your participants and I might not have explained this very well, but uh, we will be loading initially all your current participants into uh, the online system. So when you first get in, you'll be able to see all participants you currently have uh, in the system. For open enrollment, once we set the open enrollment to October 15th to begin, when you log in and you go into that annual enrollment uh, section, You'll be able to, you'll see applications for every single person that's currently a participant. Uh, and you have the ability to do one of two things with that application. If that person has chosen to uh, move to a different medical plan 
or to, to select a different medical plan, you can go into that application and you can choose the appropriate medical plan for that individual. If you, uh, uh, if they choose to stay with that medical plan, then there is a button just to say to move this person forward. It will allow you to review their application and then just submit it as is if there were no changes to their uh, benefits selection. So Mindy's gonna select Tom White for annual enrollment processing. Uh, you'll notice it basically kind of fills in all this person's information, personal information, contact information. Uh, as what you've already seen when we added an employee, this information was there. We're gonna update the mobile phone and the email for this individual. These two buttons that are at the bottom, uh, this is where if you select continue coverage, they would just continue with the coverage that they currently have from the previous year. If you select save and continue, then you will go through the process that you did when we added the new employee. It will break, basically bring up all the medical options, allow you to add a dependent if they decided to, maybe this year they didn't have a dependent, but they decided to add a dependent. Uh, um, and you just click on save and continue. Uh, in this case, we're going to click save and continue just to kind of show you what would happen. But it brings up the same screen to add a dependent. You've already seen this. We're not going to go through and add the dependent, but you could add one or many dependents right there. Save and continue again. It would bring up all the medical options that were available uh, for your group. Uh, this year. So if you added a new plan, uh, that would show up here for them to, for you to be able to select for that individual. If all the plans were exactly the same, that's what would show up here for the open enrollment period. So we're going to go ahead and with this individual, uh, we're going to, do you want to back out of this, Mindy? Yeah, we're just going to back out of this. Just wanted to show you it's exactly the same as what we've already gone through when we added a new employee, uh, but it's just through an open enrollment section of the system. All right. Are there any questions? I have a, another question that says, once the employee is terminated, are you going to continue to manage the COBRA elections? Uh, that is correct. We will continue to manage the COBRA elections. And once you've set up a termination through C through this uh, online enrollment system that we have, uh, that would termination, uh, we would, uh, through our normal process, we would identify that that person was terminating and we'd go ahead and send out the COBRA information to you based on that termination. And the next question is, is will we need to use the paper enrollment form? You, you will not need to use the paper enrollment form. You will be able to just go through. Uh, I mean, if they want to use it for their employees to use, just for okay, them. Okay, thank you, Stephanie. For clarification, if you want to use your paper enrollment form for this year for your employees to give to you, and that's the way they're selecting it, uh, then continue using it for this year. But we would uh, like for you to take that information, key it into this system, so that it all flows automatically through our uh, standard process. Great question, thank you. All right, any other questions from anybody else? Okay, have I touched on everything? I think so. Okay. Um, give you a couple more minutes just for any questions that you might have. Hopefully uh, what you saw this afternoon is that uh, the enrollment system that we've now at, that added to uh, our employer group portal uh, is pretty easy to navigate, pretty easy to work on, add people, terminate people, make changes. Uh, all of those are available through the system. We are available to help you in uh, any way, shape or form. Um, there is one thing I wanna point out 
through the webinar, there are three documents that are provided for you to download. Uh, the one I really wanted to draw your attention to, we're going to bring it up on the screen real quick. It's a document called Online Enrollment and Eligibility Employer User Guide. Um, and it basically, the first page of this just kind of goes down through and lists the types of changes that you can make through this system. But to me, the most useful piece of this document is the second page. And if you'll see, there are basically uh, blue dots beside each one of these capabilities. And if you click on the blue dot, uh, it actually takes you and it, for some reason, it takes a little bit longer in the room that we're in now, but it takes you to the user guide for that specific function that you want to do. And it brings that up information up screen by screen, step by step on how to do that specific function within the system. So I think uh, it'll be very helpful and useful uh, to all of you to utilize this uh, um, uh, document. Uh, and if you have any questions, uh, it, this is a great document to go figure out, hey, this is what I want to do. I have a new hire. Uh, I basically want to add the new hire. You click on the blue dot, and it's going to bring up uh, basically step-by-step -step instructions on how to do that. All right. We'll go back and just make sure there's no more questions that you might have. We really appreciate everybody's time this afternoon. Uh, we are so thankful uh, for the business that you bring us. It looks like we do have one more question is, is it mandatory for employers to use this system? So uh, um, basically we don't wanna, it's more strongly encouraged is the word I would use. I would not say it's mandatory, but it is very helpful to the overall process uh, for our organization working with uh, the uh, 130 groups that we have out there uh, to go to this standardized process. But we're not going to force anybody to do that, but we would highly encourage the use of this system because it would be very helpful uh, to, our, uh, to the overall process uh, of uh, keeping up with uh, all of these changes. That was a good question, though. Appreciate that. Any more questions? Well, thank you very much for your time this afternoon, and I hope everybody has a great uh, Thursday evening, and uh, we look forward to working with you. And if you have any questions about this, uh, please feel free to reach out to either Mindy, myself, Stephanie, or Kanda, and we'll be happy to uh, work with you on getting the answers. Uh, and uh, if you have any, if you're in the system, once you get access to it, if you're in the system and you have any questions, definitely reach out to us if you run into any problems. All right, well, everybody have a great afternoon. We're going to close the webinar at this time, and we hope you have a good rest of the day. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Bye-bye.